In the very first introductory video, we had a brief overview of React's component-based architecture. In this video, let's get into the details of it. In React, a component represents a part of the user interface. Going back to the example from the earlier video, you can say that our application has five components. One for header, one for side nav, one for the main content, one for the footer, and finally, one component to contain every other component. The containing component is the root component and is usually named as app component in your application. Each of the four nested components describe only a part of the user interface. However, all the components come together to make up the entire application. Components are also reusable. The same component can be used with different properties to display different information. For example, the side nav component can be the left side nav as well as the right side nav. And as already mentioned, components can also contain other components. For example, app component contains the other components. Now, how does a component translate to code in our application? A component code is usually placed in a JavaScript file. For example, app component is placed in app.js. You can also have component files with .jsx extension, but for this series, we stick to the simple .js extension. We will, however, take a closer look at JSX in one of the upcoming videos. All right, so a component is basically the code inside a .js file. But what does that code look like? That depends on the type of the component. In React, we have two component types, a stateless functional component and a stateful class component. Functional components are literally JavaScript functions. They return HTML, which describes the UI. For example, a function called welcome, which returns an h1 tag that says hello Vishwas. Now I know the HTML doesn't say that, but for simplicity, just assume we are returning regular HTML. Class components, on the other hand, are regular ES6 classes that extend the component class from the React library. They must contain a render method, which in turn returns HTML. For example, class welcome extends react.component and the class contains a render method which in returns an h1 tag that says hello Vishwas. Now what is the difference and when to use one over the other, we will discuss in the next few videos. But make a note of the two component types, stateless functional components and stateful class components. Now that we have some understanding of React components, let's examine the app component in our Hello World application. If I go back to VS Code, the first thing to notice is the file extension, .js. So it is a JavaScript file. If you take a look at the code, you can clearly see that this is a class component and not a functional component. The class is named as app and extends the component class from the React library. It contains a render method, which in turn returns some HTML. Now this is a simple Hello World application, and hence we have just one component. You can have tens, hundreds, or even thousands of components. Facebook, I believe, has over 30,000 components. More complex the application, more the number of components. All right, then let me quickly summarize what we have learned about components. Components describe a part of the user interface. They are reusable and can be nested inside other components. There are two types of components, stateless functional components and stateful class components. Components are the building blocks of any React application so it is crucial to get a good understanding of the two types of components. Let's start with functional components in the next video.